Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and in tonight's episode of the Summer Mini Skin Mini Series, we are going to combine some Dharma Acid dyes with some citric acid to do some countertop speckling. I have my work surface protected with a shower curtain, and I have pulled a lot of different Dharma Acid dye colors. Three blues, three greens, two purple slash pinks, and one brown. I will have all of the colors listed in the video description along with affiliate links to some of the materials and supplies that I will be using in this video. I am pre-soaking all of our 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon Mini Skeins in some water with vinegar. Uh, this started with 16 cups of water with four heaping tablespoons of white vinegar. And I've pre-soaked this for a couple of hours, but really 30 minutes should be sufficient. I have added one tablespoon of the citric acid powder to each of these cups. Citric acid, like vinegar, can be used as the acid source to help dyes bind to our yarn. However, today we are already soaking the yarn with some vinegar, but we're also using the citric acid as a way to dilute the dyes. And so that way we can layer on speckles and have the speckles be a little more discreet, a little more spread out, unless we decide to add it heavier onto the yarn. So this will make it a lot easier to get some, I guess, low level of speckling and then to have a little more control over that application. The citric acid in here also will help the colors bind quickly and sharply with our countertop technique we are gonna do today. Dharma Trading Company has a lot of different colors, uh, but the colors that you buy, some of them are made up with a mixture of different dye molecules. So when someone says that you see a dye break, break with speckling, it means, say, when you put out a purple, you're going to see blue speckles and red speckles. It is possible that in some of the colors I have pulled, we might see similar colored speckles. I'm not sure if the teal green and bright aqua have the same colored speckles. This is something that uh, maybe we will explore at a later date, but I have picked the colors that I picked because I think that the actual powdered speckles will have different hues. So if we combine, for example, sapphire blue and sour apple in here, you won't get teal speckles, but we'll get a mixture of blue speckles and that apple green on the yarn, which I think will be kind of fun. As we go and apply these colors that we mix to the yarn, we will be layering them on top of each other to create even more of a fade than just sort of what we mix in these colors. My mask and safety glasses are now on, and so let's start adding colors into these cups. And I'm gonna start with the blues. I am going to add some sapphire blue, sort of like the nice end of a spoon to these two cups. Now, I could measure the volume, but as I have shown in some of my other live streams, measuring dyes out by volume isn't necessarily that accurate depending on if it's super compact or not. So, that's just something to keep in mind. And we can see that there are some chunks, some bigger chunks in there, but I'm gonna just sort of roll with it. Right, next, I'm going to do some bright aqua. And again, an amount that's probably pretty close between like maybe around a quarter of a teaspoon or so. If I were to guesstimate the amount I'm putting in of these blues. And the third one, I'm gonna do some Caribbean blue. And I think I'm actually gonna shift these like this. Okay. I think that if you are, it's a lot. Okay. If you are gonna use the powder from a color that is more like a pastel, like silver gray, uh, the speckles that you get will already be, I guess, a little 
more separated than if you go with a darker color like true black because if you think about it the black is a much more saturated color and therefore there is a lot more dye in there. Next I am going to add a tiny little amount, uh, just a tiny amount of pecan brown into each of the colors. And just sort of quickly mix this up. And I am going to use the same knife, even though this might be introducing some of these dye powders into the other colors. I am okay with some small amount of transfer like that. Okay, now over here, I'm going to add sour apple. In this middle one, I'm going to add some emerald green. Then finally, in the last one, I am going to add some teal green. Finally, I want a few pops of color. So down here, I'm going to add a tiny amount, yeah, maybe we'll do two tiny amounts of the electric violet, and one tiny amount there in the middle, and I'm going to do two tiny amounts of deep magenta, and one tiny amount of deep magenta, and mix this up. with this setup that I have here today is that it's going to be a little hard to know what the colors are right now because I haven't tried them on any yarn. But as needed, I could go in and shift and adjust these hues by adding more dye or whatnot. I realized that it could be helpful to get a sense of what these mixtures are going to look like before I go in and do this uh, on the mini skeins. So here is a skein of Dyer Supplier 75. But for the sake of the rest of this video, I am considering these one, two, three, four, five, six. 5% Superwash Burrito, 25% Nylon Yarn. And I pre soaked it at the same time as the minis. Now I'm coming in with color one and pretty. And so that's color one. Here is some of color two. Color three. It's funny, is I'm not sure if I see, really see the purples or the pinks in there. Or really the brown. I'm mostly getting those blues. Maybe there would be the surprise with the pink, but maybe it's a little too uh, pastel. Um, let's try four. And then five. And then six. And I'll bring you closer so we can look at all these in just a minute. Here's a close up of number one, and I'm starting to see those deep purple speckles in with that brighter, sort of turquoise color. I'm not sure I'm seeing any bright pink from the magenta in this one that has a mixture of the purple and the pink. 
but I like the the mixture of the like purple and the bright blue that we see here. Again, I'm not sure if I'm seeing any of the brown. There is only a tiny amount of it. But in this one, I do see a few hints of pink in with that sapphire blue. I wonder if the sapphire blue has some lighter blue specks in it because I'm seeing those around there as well. So we do see some of those light green specks and then some of those turquoise specks. I think some of the colors did end up blending in here versus getting like super discrete speckles. In here we had some Caribbean blue with some emerald green and it seems to have combined into a teal. So interesting. I wonder if I didn't have the citric acid if the colors would have remained more separate. But it does feel like the colors may both be coating the citric acid and so striking in a similar spot. We'll see. And then over here we had the teal and the sapphire blue. So overall, I am happy with these six custom colors. It didn't quite do what I thought, but I think we'll be able to create some kind of really fun gradient playing around with all of these hues. I'm going to go ahead and layer more of these colors onto our yarn. Uh, I am, I would say, surprised. There's definitely some decreed co colored speckles, but uh, yeah, I think that overall we have like a really interesting mixture going on here. So I'm going to speed things up and add color to the rest of this side of the yarn and then the other side of the yarn. This yarn is awesome, and I'm going to very carefully take this not wrapped up over to my dedicated steam basket and steam it for 30 minutes. Some of the yarn might touch each other in places, but I'm going to attempt to sort of go like this and keep the more blues and more greens together, and off we go. As for the rest of the dye in our counter, which honestly is a very pretty scene already, I have got another skein of Dyer Supplier yarn, and this one I just quickly placed in uh, the water with vinegar, and I will be using this as a yarn mop for this video today. So we are going to wipe up this dye, and we will we'll wipe down the surface again, but before we start filming the next part. But uh, this is we'll keep layering color onto the skein as we go through today. Okay, we've got 30 mini skeins here on the table. 30 10 gram mini skeins, so this is a total of 300 grams of yarn. And I am holding five together at a time with some nylon zip ties to keep things from getting too tangled, plus it'll make it easier for me to flip over as needed. Now, I'm glad I did that test because this isn't quite turning out as I had expected. Uh, and so I think actually I am going to replace these in an order. So we, we now have one, two, three, six, five, four. And then that's what we're kind of kind of do, but we'll kind of blend um, them in spots. And so let's just sort of see what we can create here today. Uh, but I am, I'm still surprised because I did expect uh, that, and this is number four right now, I think. I definitely expected that we would see more variation from the speckles themselves. Uh, so maybe in order for that to really happen, I will need to... Uh, do something a little differently. There's definitely still some, 
but maybe I will need to uh, not mix it in with the citric acid. So we'll try, we'll try doing those mixtures again sometime. But for now, let's go like this. Little bits down there. Okay. And yeah, I'm just gonna be sort of speckling with this powder, going lightly, each one is going on, I guess, five skeins, and then lightly onto the ones on either side to sort of blend it together. Uh, I really thought things were gonna be much more multicolored with some pops of bright color, but you know what? I think that we're still gonna have something that is really, really pretty, even if it's more like teal and blue than what I originally started with. And I definitely, I'm seeing some different colors sort of come out as we go. So I think it'll be nice. I'm now gonna speed this up and finish off this first layer. So I think this is really, really pretty. And you can no question have like some kind of awesome fade here. I did add a little bit of the blue from the number one to this blue from the number four, just to kind of uh, bring things together a little bit maybe. I mean, again, this isn't quite what I was going for, but I think is beautiful nevertheless. Uh, so now I am going to start flipping these. And there's definitely some dye on the counter and that's going to happen and things are going to spread out but i am able to flip this uh, in a way that exposes the areas that have less dye i'm going very carefully and obviously some things will move from just the flip and just from my fingers. If we wanted even sharper speckles, uh, then you should do this low immersion versus doing it on the counter. But uh, I like the colorways we get with this technique as well. There. Now I'm going to add speckles to this side. Here is that first skein that we did. The, they're definitely speckles, but again, they spread out further. They would be sharper dots if they were applied to hot yarn. Um, I'm gonna set this aside to cool, and we're gonna go steam our mini skeins. Um, I'll go over and show you once I have them in the basket, but I think I'm gonna set up uh, half of them in one, the, the more green half in one, and the more blue halves in the other. I literally just plopped these in the steam basket sort of all together, not separating them. I am attempting to cut down on plastic, root, plastic use in general, but I am going to go ahead and steam all of these minis on the stovetop for half an hour. The, this gradient we have left over on our countertop is awesome. Uh, there's smears, but there's definitely some full more citric acid covered speckles in here. And so we are just gonna be rubbing this yarn all over. And we will create some beautiful, I think, mermaid-esque, summer ocean-esque colorway. I did already go and check the floor, and wonderfully enough, I saw 
no color on the floor. So I am thrilled, thrilled about that, uh, just wiping it down. So I like the additional weight that the citric acid powder is giving our yarn. Uh, but yeah, I think this is fun. I think that the cover, we would have ended up with something almost like my Evil Fairy Oops with how heavy we were layering these colors together. If, and that is the if I was using just straight dry powder versus cutting it with the citric acid. So even though we didn't get those mixes that we want, I think it could be fun with countertop speckling to introduce those together, even for low immersion. I've done this with low immersion and we got nice sharp specks. So I will be playing with that more. But here is our bonus game for now. We will be layering colors on one more time because we now have our 20 gram minis that we need to dye. But I will be wiping down the counter uh, as we get started. The 30 minutes are up and I am going to remove these minis from the dye pot and set them aside to cool. The yarn all looks very similar to how it did when it went in, and we've definitely got some glorious marine, oceany colored speckles. I have all of my 20 gram mini skeins mixed together. So with each of the zip ties, there are two fingering weight 20 gram mini skeins and two DK weight 20 gram mini skeins. This way, when I separate them into a set of 10 DK and a set of 10 fingering, we should end up with a cool gradient fade speckled set. So I'm really excited. I am gonna go speed this up once again. I am going to apply our dye powders to each side and then go steam set it for 30 minutes. actually looks pretty good especially as you know I shift it around just looking for any glaring the thing is as you press then like uh, things move around I guess this one here we go we need a little more over here I have a little more of each of them left there just sort of going and breaking that up but yeah now it's time to go and steam and now i'm bringing my yarn mop back to help me clean up Whew. so the yarn mop has not yet been steamed the yarn mop has just been used to wipe things up every time. And I'm still amazed that with the a huge amount of color I have used today, and the massive amount of color it looks like there's on the counter, really, it's not that much color. Probably because we did dilute it, and so as soon as it gets a little wet, it looks a little bit darker, but this yarn is fun and, you know, I love dry rubbing, even though I guess this isn't a dry rub because it's a wet rub, but the, the sort of random color application off of the counter is always something 
I greatly, greatly enjoy. Ooh, there's some pink there. Yeah, and this is giving us a very unique tonal kind of yarn. I wonder if I squeeze it. Interesting, the colors are definitely setting a bit because when I squeezed it, what came out was clear and not uh, blue or green. So anyway, I'm gonna set this aside until a steamer basket comes up, but then I will go ahead and steam this for 30 minutes as well. There is a reasonable amount of dye left. I use a lot of colors, but I just took another of the dyer supplier skeins and briefly just popped it in to, uh, to some water. And I am going to randomly just apply these colors. And sort of separate from our yarn mop, this time I am pouring the powder directly on before I move it around and stuff. And I'm doing it rather randomly. So there is some vinegar on here right off the bat, but there's definitely also uh, the citric acid in with these powders. This is kind of fun. I am really excited to play around with this technique more. Okay, I've added those powders, and now I'm gently rubbing that on. And I'm gonna flip it. Flip it and spread out these more white areas so we can try to leave no dye behind. I could have just sprinkled this all on the counter to start with, but I thought it would be different to try doing it this way and see what kind of differences or similarities we might see. And again, I am sort of helping it go in a little bit and I'm moving it around to see where I might need more color. Whoops. Everything is ending up fairly blue and turquoise. And oh, I think that it is just so much fun. Um, I do want to try to mop up some of this excess color, which might end up melding all these other hues that we have together. But, and I'm pressing. Well, how's that for a fun, variegated yarn? that we just created on our countertop. All right, and once another steamer basket is ready, I will go ahead and pop this in there. Oh, we've got a little more color. Huh. There we go. Fun. Oh, there's still a little more. The other spots where I want one more color. Cool. All right. Now it's done. <laughs> I have a portion of our mini skins here to wash. Uh, not all of them, about two thirds of them because it's about as much as I can easily put in. But so far, looks like all of our color is well set in the yarn, so I am excited. Uh, these speckles are, yeah, they're great. They're, they're big, they're juicy, and I just added some dish soap, so that way we can see if we see any bleeding. Um, this yarn has not been submerged, so it's pre-soaked, and I'm making sure to rub the ties in the water too, because 
Uh, the nylon can absorb color, but I want to make sure that there's no dye left anywhere uh, before we go and put all the yarn in our spin fryer. I will be washing most of it off camera, but I do not see any significant bleeding, and so all the yarn will be washed with this uh, this technique, and then we'll go through my spindle, and I will come back when it's all dry, and we'll take a much closer look. Here are all of the 20 gram mini skeins before I went and twisted them up and separated them from sock and DK. But I figured it was worth showing the order and the color progression. It was hard for me to tell while I was dyeing the yarn, but you do see some purple and some little discreet brown speckles in here. Uh, and even in the blue, there's some like different tones, uh, but I was layering multiple mixtures on top of each other. So it's hard to say with the blues what necessarily could be breaking, but with the brown and pink, uh, you can definitely see that. I absolutely combined the greens with some blues, kind of hoping that those blues would sort of stick throughout, and those did blend together. But in some areas on some of these greens, you can see some breaking in the speckles, where we see some more discrete blue, discrete teal, and then even like more of a lime green slash yellow speckle. Um, since I haven't speckled with a lot of these colors before, uh, it's hard. I know some of the these speckles were sort of turquoisey to begin with, but there is absolutely still some blending that happened in here, but not as much as I thought when I was dyeing the yarn. Here is our speckled gradient. These are the 10 gram mini skeins. We have 30 total. And I have to say, for all this was not what I was exactly going for, I am really, really happy with how it came out. While I was filming, it seemed like all the colors did combine completely, but you definitely can see pink and then in some cases some of those brown speckles in there. There's no question that in these greens, the blues and greens that we mixed together did combine somewhat. But there are some areas where you do see different hues of the green, and some different blues. Oh, and there's some of the browns. Did this work exactly as I had anticipated? No, not at all. Uh, but I think that what we ended up with is still really pretty. And maybe combining some speckles in advance is a way to uh, still get some amount of breaking with the speckles, but it's just a different way of mixing colors. I wish that I had saved some of each separately to speckle with, so that way I could compare the difference between the combined speckles and the separate ones. But clearly, that's a video that I'm going to need to do on another day. Here is the lovely gradient. Things are a lot more subtle than I think I had in my head, I, but I am happy. I love all of these shades of teal, turquoise, blue, and green. And I think that this all together would create something really, really magical. We dyed 300 grams here at the same time, and this makes one lovely gradient. But we could also divide this into 300 gram gradients. I am just gonna go and every three, one, one down, one up, one, one down, one up. These three gradients that we created are not identical. For example, this one has more light green than this one. Um, I guess you could see some differences in the palest blue and medium blue, but they are definitely related. And this is a fun way to create multiple related gradients at once. And 
I don't know, I just love the way that this turned out. In addition to our fade sets, we dyed three full skeins of Dyer Supplier 75% Superwash Merino 25% Nylon. And these three skeins honestly create a really pretty fade set of their own. You can combine two or all three and I think it could be really, really fun. Uh, first, we sort of tested out our uh, speckle combinations, our citric acid powder, by just putting them on one skein to see what kind of mixtures we had created. We used another skein to wipe up the counter after dyeing all these speckles, and we did that and created this really random, oceany feeling colorway. I love that we have some pops of pink in here, and there are some really subtle speckles in this area of these smooth, shimmery colors. Finally, I took all of that leftover powder and we combined it on one skein. Again, rubbing on the countertop. Uh, there are still some speckles in here, but it is a very saturated, dense, non-repeating colorway. I think of the three, the speckled one is semi-repeating because there's different regions that have specific colors. But even so, I think the three of these would be really, really fun together. You could probably knit any of these gradients in stockinette as is, and the transitions would not be pretty abrupt. Because there are skeins in each of them that have mixtures of two of the more solid groupings. However, you could also sort of narrow these down more and take, you know, four or five and fade them together. And so you could change the order and still create a lovely fade with them. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and there is no question that I am going to be playing around more with. Uh, using citric acid combined with acid dyes to speckle in the future. I already have three or four different video ideas that I've just been sketching out and I'm just really excited to get to my dyes and to start playing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe, uh, like, turn on notifications, all that jazz, so that way you never miss any of the new content. And make sure that you stay tuned because the fifth night of the summer mini skein mini series comes out tomorrow. And I think that what I've got planned is going to be really spectacular. There are so many ways that you could support Chemnitz and the content that I'm creating here. The biggest way that you can support us is by watching, engaging, leaving comments. But if you would like to bring home some of the things you see in these videos, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, the shop is filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming videos, and there's just a lot of really fun colorways there. Thank you so much for watching, everyone!